you little scamp. Do you know how much the core you took was worth? I stole it from the castle. Three years it took me to get it. And now... Stay out of it! If you die, it'll be as good as new. You brought this on yourself! From now on, I'll protect you. I'll keep you safe. Always. My name is Jin. What's yours? Laura. It seems like sending Alcos was the right choice. You all right? I've been through worse. I can handle it. Jin, I swear I'll make your dream come true. So stop putting yourself at risk. There's still time. Is that part of your dream, too? What are we in the end? This hunger I feel, this thirst, is it really my own or is it someone else's? <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell. Tell me, Jin, are you really here? I don't know where I really am. You're starting to sound like a human. Oh, yeah? Perhaps we're not so different after all. Humans and blades. What's the deal with this ceasefire? A tribunal, it looks like. Praetor on Malthus is here in person. And who's going to argue with the Praetor? Does he have any clue how many men we lost? If those Ardanians get away with this, architect, damn it. Quit your grumbling, mate. All this is way beyond our pay grade. You got that right. We're all just faceless cannon fodder to the bigwigs. CEO says jump, we jump.
My deepest thanks to you for agreeing to this ceasefire, Queen Rakura, Emperor Nile. As I recall from the Assyrian Treaty of 350 years ago, the Praetorium was to refrain from intervention in times of war. And yet here you are intervening. But I trust you have a suitable justification, Your Eminence. Naturally. But first, to ensure impartiality in these negotiations, may I present Nira Nira, acting chairman of the Argentum Trade Guild. Furthermore, representing the Tantalese, His Highness the Crown Prince Ozyclyrus Brunev Tantal will also be attending. The Crown Prince? The Prodigal Prince of Tantal? <laughs> What a spectacle. Seems the Praetor has as much clout around here as ever. Could we not just take them out here and now? Good point. All the principal nation's heads gathered here. It'd make things easy later. The way to the world tree must first be opened. Wiping out mankind is the easy part. We could manage that ourselves. Even so... That isn't our only goal, remember? We must wait for the stage to be set. Is Jin serious about this? Yeah. I've been wondering that myself. <laughs> oh, he's serious. He always is. He will annihilate mankind, and then... He will kill... The Architect. Now, it seems Mor Ardain has been accused of a unilateral breach of treaty in this matter. Emperor Nile, I open the floor to you. Is there anything you wish to say? While we are still conducting investigations into the cause, it cannot be denied that weaponry belonging to our forces was discharged against Uriah. Regardless of any possible reason and circumstance, we are prepared to offer recompense for this grave offence. So you want to settle this with money? We will provide any compensation deemed necessary. Perhaps I'm misunderstanding. To my ears, it sounds almost as if you mean to imply that the blame for these offences does not lie with your majesty at all. We are investigating. I ask that we not draw any hasty conclusions. What need is there for investigation? I believe a cause has already been established. There are witnesses. And that would be? What a preposterous notion. The people you speak of are merely a terrorist group. How could they possibly command that measure of... It's the truth. I, Ozyclyrus, swear this in the name of King Eulogimenos Tantal. Can confirm, ex-chairman Banner, give these people some kind of supplies. Military supplies, methinks, and in great number, yes. But why would... What if I were to tell you that the Aegis Malus, who raised the world five centuries ago, was involved? Ridiculous. Everyone knows he disappeared in a blaze of flame. He's very much alive, believe me. That arsehole, I mean, the Aegis has confronted us in person. And if my word is not enough for you...
A blade? But... but that poor crystal... <gasps> this is another Aegis, named Mithra. Your Highness has heard of her, surely. So the rumors that reached us were true. Who is its driver? If you knew that, I dare say your surprise would be even greater. But that is not the matter we are here to discuss, Your Highness. This is a dire situation. Six o'clock already. Mithra's been in there for a long time now. We've just got to trust them. They're dealing with the leaders of whole nations. It's not like there's anything you or me can do to help. Ugh. I've noticed something about Malos. He's an Aegis, but you wouldn't know it from how he's fighting. I think... I'm pretty sure he's damaged in some way. You mean he can't use the full extent of his powers? The wounds I dealt in our battle long ago may not be completely healed. His end goal is Elysium. He wants to go back to the place he was born. There he can heal until his powers have recovered. If Malos is allowed to restore himself... The horrors of five centuries past will return. Or worse still, Malos's goal is simple. He means to destroy humanity in its entirety. Why would anyone desire that? Perhaps he doesn't even need a reason. It seems to be a deep-seated drive. An instinct. As natural as breathing. All of this is my responsibility. Traitor Amalthus? Whatever do you mean? It was none other than I who awakened Malos and unleashed him upon the world. So, your eminence, the rumor that you were once Malos's driver is... I never intended to obscure the truth. It is writ plain for all to see in history books. I was a fool. It was to prevent such foolishness that all passage to the World Tree was forbidden after the Aegis War. However, it has become apparent that the laws of men do not apply to Malos. <sighs> the time may have come to lift that restriction. I appreciate this. Don't think you've earned my trust. But since Rex is going to Elysium, their paths are bound to cross. That's all. I'm surprised. You seem so devoted to the boy. It's for both our sakes. But you, Amalthus, who is it that you're living for? I guess they did call her a goddess. The state funeral makes sense. 
Shouldn't you be with him? He's a boy. Best not to bother them at times like this. <laughs> I expected you'd be more clingy. You really are different from him. Actually, letting him be was more her idea than mine. Really? Pirates? Get out. So wait, you're saying you want to go be clingy or what? I'll burn you. I kid, I kid. Sheesh. It's weird, though. What is? I mean, don't you think it's odd? Normally, if a blade or its driver dies, it'll just go back to being a core crystal. So why is Fan just dead? I did wonder the same thing. There's only one way I know for a dead blade to keep its physical form. Remember Minna? I mean, Cole. He was a flesh eater. Yeah. But Fan wasn't a flesh eater. I can say that for sure. What's that? That's the shape of Fan's core crystal. Well, how it used to be. But now it's a triangle. Rex and I are quite a unique case, but this is different still. How is it different? If a blade shares its core with another, its shape changes in a uniform fashion. In our case, the center part went to Rex and the outer part to us. I don't know why that is, but it seems to be a rule. But Fans isn't like that. Exactly. It looks more like someone stole her core, doesn't it? My apologies. Did I keep you waiting? No, not really. What were you doing? I was cleansing the core crystals. It markedly increases their resonance success rate. Bonding with the crystal carries certain risks, you understand. I know. When I became the driver of an Aegis, this power was awakened in me. So, I might be able to do it too. Who knows? Different people are cut out for different things. Right, yeah. Now then. My work is done for the day. Come with me. A special envoy? To Tantal? Me? Correct. Behold. As a salvager, I imagine you are already aware, but this is Allrest, the world we currently inhabit. We make our home on Titans, moving in circles around the world tree. And here lies the Great Void. This void came into being 500 years ago, it did not exist prior to that. So I've heard. It's in our way anyway. It stops us reaching the world tree. The Great Void is carved from the Cloud Sea by a monstrous beast known as Ophion. Wait, you mean that thing?
To be precise, it is an artifice, a servant of the Aegis. Of Mithra. So if that thing is Mithra's, then what did it attack us for? Doesn't make sense. Ophion was felled in the ancient battle with Malos, sinking below the clouds. This means someone must have revived it. Correct. And you're saying that someone was Zeke's home country, Tantal? Yes. They gave Ophion one directive. To ensure that none approach the World Tree. They sought to prevent a repeat of the horrors of the Aegis War. So, an obstacle was created. The Great Void. How did they manage a feat like that? As I've said, mankind is regressing. Only one artifact remains that can rescind Ophion's orders, and it lies in Tantal. It's called the Omega Feta, and it's guarded by the royal family. I'll take you to it. I've prepared your envoy documents already. Your quest is to set foot in Elysium, correct? Malos and his ilk will surely seek the Omega Feta for themselves. I would ask you to reach Elysium before they do and inform me of what you find there. Do it as a favor for a once foolish old man and so that people may have a future in this dying world. We can reach Tantal by ship, but once we're there, we'll need to do a spot of walking. So we're traveling with Shell, lad, yeah? Never thought I'd see the day. I think you'll find I make a fantastic ally. Mm, luck of Zeke, not so great. Bet we shipwrecked by tomorrow. <laughs> Cheeky furball. We're all gonna die. Hey, Zeke, you said before that Torna concerned you too. What did you mean by that? What? Oh, yeah, that. I don't know about those clowns, but Torna, the country that fell 500 years ago, they were the ancestors of us Tantalese. The people of Tantal are descended from Adam, the hero of Torna who escaped its destruction. So, after Pyra fell asleep, Adam escaped to Tantal? That's right. That is the first I've heard of it. I have studied much history, but this story never featured. Most peculiar. We're humble. Don't really like to brag about it. The only real trace left is in this here sigil of the royal family. So why did you awaken Hayes? Because her power was of great use to me. Indol has found itself under attack from Torna a number of times. She was necessary in driving them back. Really? Then why don't you seem to have any others? Blades, that is. <laughs> Driver though I may be, I am no fighter. Besides, I find the warrior monks here so reliable. They get the job done. <laughs> if you say so. I wonder, do you know why Torna are using the name of a dead country? Jin was a blade of Torna once. Loyalty or nostalgia? Who can say? Perhaps both. Is that really all there is to it? You don't think so? I don't know much about what happened while I slept. There are no written records, either. All we have is 
stories passed down. And you think that is insufficient? History is a murky thing. Only those present can truly know what took place. But weren't you one of those present? And that is why I offer you my cooperation. I guess we'll find out if we go to Tantal. Hmm. Tensions seem high. From what I gather, it seems an official summit is to be held between Morardane and Uriah. A summit? You mean about the recent pension? But I thought... Didn't Praetor Amalthus get them to stop and sort it all out? Perhaps there are some discussions they would prefer Indol not to be privy to. Besides, Uriah doesn't like to associate too closely with Indol. They'd hate to be seen as acquiescing to the Praetor's will. Got to keep up appearances, you know. Acquiescing? You what? Like letting him tell them what's what. <laughs> For such a span, are you sure you some big words? How can? Stop calling me that! Buzz off, kitty no-mates! Anyway... This summit would explain why Morag isn't around. Indeed. She has much to attend to. Shared sovereignty over... Gormot. Yes. I don't think anything less would be sufficient to placate them. The Senate would never approve it. I can overrule them by decree. Of course... I would need to secure Senator Roderick's cooperation. Imperial decree? If it's come to that, well, then I cannot dissent. I cannot help but admire your courage, Your Majesty. That means a lot, coming from you. Acting Chairman Nira Nira. Sorry for intrude. Is emergency, so Nira Nira take liberty of drop by unannounced. You certainly look troubled, Chairman. So, what is this emergency you speak of? Well... So, we can make our way to Tantal from here. I assume the Praetor has a ship waiting for us. Hey, Shalad. What? Are we really gonna just leave Morag behind? Who's leaving anyone? She's got her own priorities, you know? Yeah, but still. Anyway, her schedule is filled with official duties right now. For sure. It's just a bit of a shame, is all. You know, since we came all this way together. I guess I know how you feel, chum. Huh? Speak of the devil?
banners going for the summit. On top of everything, an assassination attempt? If blood gets spilled at the summit, it'll mean war. War's good for business, after all. I guess he wants to use that to get himself back in with the guild. Why, that little? I was wondering where he'd slunk off to. What a sneaky git. It seems acting chairman Nira Nira wishes to take care of this incident covertly, to avoid it reflecting badly upon the guild. So you came to us? If we mobilize the army, the whole thing will become public. Oh, I get it. So we're a more convenient solution. I'm not forcing you. If you refuse, Bridget and I will do what we can alone. Ah, oh, come off it, lady. You wouldn't even think of dragging us into this if you thought you could handle it on your own. I suppose not. You know Banna as well as I. There's no telling what he might be plotting. According to acting chairman Nira Nira, several giant weapons were being built at the factory where we last saw him. And one of them is currently unaccounted for. Giant weapons. Got it. Besides, you know, we've got our own score to settle with him. Thank you. It will be easier to focus on my duties knowing you are on the case. Good luck. Leave it to us. Stop everything! Hold it! What? What? <laughs> Don't play dumb! Poison! That food is poisoned! B -b 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 poison You kids crazy in brains! We're past talking! Quick! Grab them! Yeah! Please wait! Papoonin, what are you doing here? What silly question! It's Papoonin who hire world-famous band of gourmet chefs, fire dragons! World-famous? Gourmet chefs. Mora Dane, very insistent, want only very best food for important summit. Papoonin worked wings to bone in finding chefs, and now what this? Uh, so you mean... These guys are just a bunch of cooks. I did think they were not putting up much of a fight. Then this food is actually... Dee 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 dee, 
delicious. I could eat this stuff forever. What friend doing? Very expensive food now go to waste. Sorry. We really did think they were here to murder someone. Murder? What this nonsense friends talk? I demand compensation. Friends have no idea how much time and money Papunin spent on this. An explosion? Huh? From where? Hey, what's going on? Explosion in the hangar! Right when everyone was busy with Queen Rakura's arrival. It's really bad. The Queen is here. This is it. Rex, we need to hurry. Yeah. Hey! Hey, 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 wait! Hey! No running away! Compensation! Who are you, villain? Is this some underhanded Ardadian trick? Wrong! But, but also right! Truth is complicated! Anyhow, here is where Queen died! If it looks like Queen killed by more Ardain, me in the money again! That voice... Banner, from the Argentum Guild! Correct! Tabas for the Queen! But you were unseated as chairman. It's not so easy to get rid of Banner. Trade Guild of Argenta belong to Banner, down to last screw, last drop of oil. <sighs> Hold it, Banner. Yo, Rex! Nah, Banner not let Rex interfere with plans. Again and again! Banner does stand for this! Master Pun, that artificial blade! It... Rosa! Meh, meh, meh! Tora feel much greater power than before! Especially from Mark on forehead! What's going on? What's that? <laughs> Even Emperor comes straight to Banner! Come on, Banner. Cut the bad guy talk and accept you've lost. You know you won't get away with it. What with all these witnesses here. If Banner simply kill everyone, then nobody blah. Victory of Banner is a shock. You know we can't let you do that. <laughs> you think you handle the power of a crazy Giga Rosa? Things go very different this time. Even Giga Rosa defeated by these nasty meddling kids. This ends here, Bada. You are under arrest. The Praetorium will handle the judgment. Assassination is a serious matter. Your sentence will be harsh. So the mercantile genius Banner. 
meets an inglorious end before my very eyes. Pitiful. Uh, Banner is... Hmm? Banner is not kind of man to go down like this. Uh. If I go down, I take you with me! Watch out! Ijeon! As you wish. <sighs> Niall Ardenek, you... you sought to... protect us? I'm glad. Majesty! Majesty! Your Majesty, please, no! Your Majesty, I have failed you. It can't be to protect us. You... Please, wake up. Nio! Nio! Morag. Dromak. Yes? Distract the others. Distract? I'm not sure I... No. My lady, you cannot. There's still time. Hurry! Yes, my lady. There are more of them! Where? What do you say? This way! The rest of you should get to safety. Chum! I'm on it! You are... Shh. You're gonna be fine. What do you mean, imagined it? You got us all in a proper tizzy. My apologies. I thought I spied silhouettes. I did not mean to cause trouble. Majesty the Emperor is awake. What? Can it be? Majesty? I apologize for making you worry. Majesty! It's... it's a miracle. When Aegean returned to his core, I was certain we had lost you. Honestly, you call yourselves soldiers. First aid? Anyone who'd have it. But... his wounds... <laughs> Just scratches. <laughs> Nothing me and Dromark can't handle. You saved... Thank you, Mia. 
I truly don't know how to... I will never be able to repay you for what you... Oh, don't sweat it. Let's just say you owe me when. That'll do fine, right? Mia. You shouldn't be up. It's only been one day. Please don't strain yourself. Half a day off and look at all this paperwork. I swear, it's like they don't want me to sleep at all. Majesty. Special Inquisitor. I hereby issue you new orders. It is my wish that you travel with the Aegis as an emissary of the Empire. Guard her and defend her against her enemies until she reaches Tantal. Guard the Aegis? I've already discussed it with his eminence. Forgive me, your majesty. I cannot accept. Just think about what happened yesterday. It would be sheer foolishness for me to leave your side. Is that so? Huh? I can see it in your eyes. It's clear that the Aegis, or rather, that boy, has made a great impression on you. That's not. I am your special inquisitor. Ensuring your majesty's safety is my only concern. To abandon that duty and go traveling, Is this... Aegeon's? A driver who cannot even protect himself is no driver at all. Yesterday's events have made me keenly aware that I have no aptitude for it. It will be of more use in your hands. Majesty. The world is changing, Morag. I trust you more than anyone to lend that boy the wisdom and strength he will need. I miss it, you know. Lake Util and Gormont. What? Remember when the two of us would shake off the servants and go swimming there? Um, yes. Of course. Kids from the nearby village would come too. Good times. Majesty. If more Ardain, no, the whole of all rest, could be like that again, wouldn't it be beautiful? Is that my new duty then? In truth, it should have been you sitting in this chair right now. The Imperial line has always passed from father to son. On the day your majesty was born, that's exactly what happened. I knew that day would come. It came as no surprise. You were raised by my father to take the throne of the Empire. As befits the daughter of my lord uncle Andric. And I am grateful for it. If not for him, I would never have met Bridget. Never have met them. I'd have missed out on so much. There. Those are your true feelings. <sighs> A magnificent power resides in you. Morak, power like yours exists to be used. Nile. You've been tied down long enough. Follow your heart, Morag Lidea. I have no words. Thank you, Your Majesty. Very well, then. I hereby accept the task you have assigned to me. That's the Morag I know and love. 
make me proud. So that's how it is. It seems our paths continue to entwine. That's awesome news. To be honest, I was really hoping there was some way you could stick around. I was just thinking of asking you myself. Saved you the trouble, did I? That you did. Thanks a bunch, Morag. I can't help but feel that in all the confusion surrounding Banner, our concerns have been neatly swept aside. The Praetorium maintains absolute control over blade distribution. It is quite vexing. Awakening rates from natural cores are very low, which limits the pool of compatible drivers. So to create large numbers of drivers, the cleansing Indol provides is a necessity. That much I'm willing to accept. The real problem is the fact that the Aegis has awakened. Now, this is no time to be squabbling over territory. If we misread the situation even a little, Uriah itself could be sunk to the Cloud Sea's bed. Emperor Nile must surely be thinking the same thing. That's why he sent his precious Morag to shepherd them along. And now we find ourselves in their debt. Who could have predicted such an act of selflessness? Was it just the passion of youth? Or was it... M my liege? In any case... For now, we should keep our troops mobilized while we monitor the situation. I hardly expect Tantal will comply with the Praetor's plan so easily, either. Say, chum, which one do you fancy, Pyra or Mithra? Uh, Zeke, you can't just ask someone... Anyway, they're the same person. I've never really thought of them separately. Are you serious? But they're like totally different characters. Like Mithra is jolly intense, and Pyra is just totally mellow, or I don't know, what's the opposite of pushy? On the outside, maybe. Pyra's got a lot of backbone, too. She can be pretty stubborn. You seem to understand them pretty deeply. Well, I suppose you are their driver. Hey. Yeah? You're a prince from Tantal, aren't you, Zeke? Why were you in the Praetorium? I mean, you can't just ask someone. Oh, his old man kicked him out. Oi! No! Bad blade! Bad! How long have you been standing there? From about... Which one do you fancy? Which one do you fa... That's the whole conversation! As I was saying, my prince got disowned by his father. He spent all his time traveling the world for fun, instead of attending to his studies. Then bye! It wasn't for fun. I was learning all about, uh, society and international relations. International relations, that what you call it? Oi, can it, you? What are you doing anyway, dissing your own driver? <laughs> you guys crack me up. I love him, really. Oh. Anyway, he sounds tough. Zeke's dad, I mean. Tantal is an isolationist society. Crossing its borders without leave is strictly forbidden. 
It's been that way for ages now. Oh, hmm. But you've seen how my prince here is. Couldn't stop himself leaving a few times. So he got chewed out and disowned. Back when he was 15 or something? Yeah, something like that. Then the Praetor himself found him half dead on the ground one day and took him in. He made up that special envoy stuff. And that's how you ended up in Indon. It all makes sense now. Oh, but wait. Is it safe for you to go back to Tantar then? This time we've got official business from the Praetorium. It'll be fine, probably. Besides, yeah? Tantal is too ignorant of the outside world. It needs a wake-up call. Sire, we have reached the designated coordinates. Please. Right! Ready? You betcha! Huh? Shut up and sit down, chum. This'll be great! My lord, Genbu has begun surfacing. I am aware. It's Pandoria. Then the prince... Yes. We have received reports that he made contact with the Aegis in Indol. So after 500 years, he makes his move. Praetor Amalthus. My lord? We must act to protect our days of peace, even if they are a dream that cannot last. version of Tutus. It's called Genbu. It's the same, like, Titan type as Uriah. Normally, it's submerged in the Cloud Sea. Even in early fall, it can get pretty cold inside Tantal. Mind you, don't freeze! <sighs> I really can't stand the cold. I can provide my own warmth. You can stay close to me if you like. Me as well. You guys are pretty handy to have around. Well, it is our trademark, right? Essentially. Aren't you gonna be cold like that, Shalad? I'm used to it. I'll be dandy. He's naturally dense. It's good insulation. Oh, oh makes, makes sense. sense. Stop encouraging her, gang of bullies! Hey, Nia, do you... 
Um, mind? <laughs> Come on, it's not so bad. You're just so warm. I can't help it. It's a function of what's known as infrared radiation. Gramps knows everything. I'm not your personal heater, you know? Um, my lady. If you desire warmth, why not take some from me? Miss Pyra seems to be in some distress. No way. Your fur is all stiff and spiky with a cold. It'd be murder on my sensitive skin. But, my lady. Hey, is it just me, or are the ether lines really dim? What is meaning of ether lines? You know, those things, the glowing threads that run inside a titan. That is the glow of pure ether coursing through the titan's body. You can compare it to the bloodstream of a human. You've got good eyes. Genbu has pretty bad circulation compared to other titans. They say it's why we have a cold climate and awful crops. So it's... cold-blooded? <laughs> Call it what you like. Oh my, this is the very picture of the ancient civilizations I've read about. It's a pretty classic look. You know the old land of Torna? They had a proud and noble civilization, rivaled only by Judicium at the time. But, whereas Judicium were the masters of biological arts, Tornans knew all there was to know about engineering. The proud blood of Torna runs in the veins of us, Tantalese. As there are people to pass it on to, civilization will endure. Knowledge is inherited, much like life itself. Nice quote. You should write that down. Thank you. It's not that simple, though. Huh? You'll see. It's a pretty lively market. It's the black market. Black market? Tantal is so cold, there's precious little in the way of local produce to sell. Just look, all the regular shops are shuttered. You're right, they're mostly empty. Instead, folks pay ungodly prices for produce that's been smuggled in from other nations. And since it's the only thing keeping people from actually starving, the bigwigs just turn a blind eye. So most of the agricultural production is wasted just surviving, and the country grows weak. Exactly. So even the wisdom of a proud ancient civilization cannot solve all problems. Ancient civilization sounds good and all, but basically, this place is a giant museum with no tourists. That's not going to feed anyone.
We have been expecting you, your highness. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you. Is the old man inside? Indeed. He has been eagerly awaiting your return. Ha! <laughs> now I know you're lying. Our moves will fly before that man welcomes me home. No need to coddle me, mate. Apologies. Any case, seems he knows we're coming. That'll save time. Could it be? Are you all right? Yes. Tora? Uh, but why? It true. I'll be able to produce own reserves of ether energy, but. I'll explain later. For now, just do as I ask. All right then. Leave it to Tora! The Aegis, I presume. Huh? Huh? God, my lady. Meme, meme, what the hell is going on? Shall I? No, no idea. Stop this at once. Damn! to wait until they do, Zeke. The world must not be allowed to burn. The Aegis must be destroyed. Oh, no, you don't. Dromak, let's get Rex up to there. Roger. The ether energy. My lady. Please do not resist. My goal is only to destroy the Aegis. I have no wish to take your lives also. King Eulogimenos, I stand before you as a special envoy of Morardain. The Emperor sent me here himself. Do you realize what you are doing? I am quite aware and prepared to face the consequences. Prepared? I see you still speak like a commoner. What's that got to do with anything? Don't change the subject! What if I told you I act for justice? What are you trying to say? You could say, I'm doing this for all rest. Say what now? Follow me.
This is... This is the legacy of our royal line. You can't be serious! Why? Father, why? It appears the flow of ether energy is being blocked off. Damn it! While we're doing this, Pyra is... We have to do something! There is no point, Rex. You're just wasting your strength. Both the walls and floor are built to withstand great force. We cannot make a dent in them. Let's calm down a bit, Rex. If we think calmly, we'll come up with something. <sighs> hey, you lot! Can you try to help us out here? Your efforts are pointless. The way they built this place, it's essentially one giant stasis web. Stasis web? Like those nets used in Torigoth. To lock drivers up together with their blades, and even leave us our weapons, they must have the utmost confidence. Perhaps we could break through given enough time, but by then it will be too late and the Aegis will be disposed of. Disposed of? That's all the more reason you should give us a bloody hand. I said it's pointless. <sighs> we won't get anywhere. With brute force, that is. Huh? So what now, my prince? This pisses me right off. Uh, say what? I said I'm pissed off. Doing it for the world, my ass. How self-serving can you get? How do you mean? This country's strangling itself to death with its own web of lies and excuses. But just maybe our chum could break it free. Rex could? No faith, eh? Hey, whatever. If you believe in him, my prince, I'm with you all the way. That kid's heart is pure. Too pure for his own good, sometimes. But isn't it our duty as adults to give him a little help with that? Probably. You know, this is what I like about you. This won't be easy. Oh, quit it with your drama! When is anything ever easy for you? <laughs> Let's go! Okay, that should do it. Preparations complete! What's going on, Tora? Oh, both drivers and blades use ether energy to deploy arts, yes? You can skip the lecture, Tora. Everyone knows that. But right now, friends cannot, yes? Yeah. There's something about this room. Oh, but Rex Rex and friends forgetting one very important thing. Hurry up, would you? Just spit it out, Furball. Could be friends forgetting Poppy is artificial blade? Why would we forget that? She's been with us all this time. Wait, I get it. Haritha Furnace. Rex correct. Thanks to friend Morag, Poppy now able to generate own supply of ether energy. Nothing Barrier can do anything about. Tora transfer crystal from Sword of Morag to Biter of Poppy. That crystal have enough energy stored for one use of arts. And Biter of Poppy use Earth Element. 
So, through synergy with fire element of Morag, power of art is amplified. If we hit it straight on, I doubt the door can withstand that. Wait a minute. You stored energy in that crystal. How is that possible with a barrier? Aha! Lady Morag has not used a single art since we arrived in this place. What? I had my suspicions ever since we entered the palace. So, I secretly asked Tora to refrain from using any arts either. Whoa-ho-ho-ho! I see now. If our enemy's new poppy retains her power inside the barrier, they would keep us on a tighter leash. Exactly. Here goes. Step back. Hold up! If you transferred the crystal from the sword, what will you fight with? I can generate a new one from Bridget's core. <laughs> Don't tell me you didn't know about that. What? Seriously, you don't even know how blade weapons work. Give me a break. How would I know something like that? I've never lost or broken my weapon. Then I suppose I cannot blame you. Moving along, then. Tora, Poppy, please. With pleasure. Poppy power! Jet fighter! We the best! You made quite some noise, too. It won't be long before the guards arrive. Good point. Lady Pyra was taken below. Mayhap somewhere beneath the palace? Got it. Zeke! Pandoria! Oh, what? We came all this way to bust you out! How inconsiderate! You kept us waiting. Won't you get in trouble for helping us? Oh, I'm the prodigal son, anyhow. It can't get any worse. Where's Pyra? This way. Follow us. Ow, 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 ow. You all right? I'm fine. It's just a scratch. Honestly, though, chum, are you ever not getting scratched up? Ever since Pyra gave me half a life force, and we swore to reach Elysium, things have been rough. But... I'm actually glad. They feel like a sign of our bond, I guess. Something special we share as driver and blade. Where? Strung up in some kind of restraint. Look ahead. Uh. 
An ether accelerator. I've seen one like it before in old Torna. It certainly seems like they want us gone for good. So, if we crank up the output and really focused it, we could probably manage one strike. If the people here really are the descendants of the Tornans, then I have a message for them that I must pass on. In that case, I'll leave it to you. Thank you, Mithra. He's here. I apologize for this, noble Aegis. I have no personal grievance with you. However, for the sake of this world, you must be destroyed where you stand. Is that truly your desire? Your Majesty? I believe you desired the same thing yourself once. Is that not why you disappeared from history? Along with Adam the hero? <laughs> Begin. Ether Accelerator. The what now? It's a weapon from long ago, designed to use Genbu's ether energy for destruction. I never dreamed they'd fully restore it. My old man, he's gonna use it to kill Pyra. No matter how strong she is, there'd be no coming back from that. In that case, we can't let him use it. Five hundred years. For five hundred years, we Tantalese have concealed the Omega Fetter. Do you know why? Um. Our old homeland, Torna, was destroyed in the Aegis War. Our hero, Adam, also failed to return. You must understand. Old Torna as a country was united around the hero, but our ancestors less so. What are you saying? That we're not Adam's bloodline? Precisely. 
In Torna, our family were just a cadet branch. We only gained our current position in the confusion of the war's aftermath. But then, we're just a bunch of usurpers! They were desperate times. We had no choice. The nation must continue at all costs. Even if it meant claiming Adam's name. With its guiding force gone, much blood was spilled in Torna. We did what had to be done to reunite it under the new banner of Tanta. Legends of the hero who saved the world are deeply ingrained in people's hearts. And you used them for your own political agenda. Even so, all was done in the name of saving the world from burning once more. Don't you dare try and sugarcoat it. Short story is, they saw an opportunity to gain influence and they took it. Gah! That is the way of the world. Moradain could easily take a similar path. Yes, we are in no position to condemn them outright. So did this Adam guy really never return? Indeed. The records indicate he went missing immediately after sealing away the Aegis. It is likely he simply perished during the journey home. He didn't just go missing. What did you say? Aegis? Adam. He had foreseen everything. He knew what would happen to the people after the kingdom fell. But he chose not to return. Adam left us of his own will. But why? Hear me, my science. I am Adam Origo. This day I seal the Aegis, away from the world. But this seal is not for eternity. In anticipation of the day that humanity becomes worthy of the Aegis's power, I entrust her to posterity. She is our hope. When mankind has matured and learned to live better lives, she will answer your call and return to you. Trusting that day will come, I leave my final wish to you. Adam foresaw much confusion and hardship in the world ahead. And when I seemed unsure, he told me something. This is a trial. Is me sleeping a part of the trial? That's right. It is a trial for us humans, one we must overcome ourselves. If we cannot do that, we don't deserve to live alongside you. Live alongside. To be honest, I still don't fully understand what he meant by that. Whether he simply meant the coexistence of humans and blades, or something more. But I think he made a difficult choice. For the sake of everyone's survival. Well, Your Majesty. What is this? It's Genbu. It's broken free of our control and started to dive into the clouds. What? Are you certain? <laughs> 
Sandy! Oh! Oh no! What exactly is happening? Could it be that blast? What is he? Tantal keeps Genbu under control using the Omega Feta. But firing the ether accelerator, it could have created a counterflow in Genbu's ether conduits, causing a critical overload. So Genbu's broken. Oh no, my words can't reach him anymore. Genbu is just going to dive deeper and deeper. Then. Domo, git! That's what happens when you use antiquated parts. Cloud Sea has a similar density to water. As we dive, the pressure will keep building. By 500 pets, a human would be crushed completely. And all that force will weigh down on Genbu? What's our depth now? 2,200 pets, sir. We are diving at a rate of 120 pets per minute. And Genbu's depth limit? 25,000, give or take. That'll give us just over three hours. Oh, Shalex, good at maths. Bite me. This ain't good. Hey, Chum, there's a pressure resistant pod in the palace's southern tower. You guys at least should get in and escape. What about you and everyone else? Don't worry about us. How can I possibly not worry about you? Isn't there any other way? Some way to save everyone? Only Pandoria can tell Genbu what to do. If it won't budge for her, it's no use. Apart from that, all we can do is try to evacuate as many people as we can. But with just three hours. I think you mentioned before, you control Genbu using the Omega Factor, right? Uh, yeah, but... Where is it? Inside Genbu's head. It's straight south from the palace, through Genbu's spinal column. I will go. You'll go? Pyro, what are you... The Omega Feather is originally Ophion's control core. And Ophion is my artifice. I can't be 100% sure, but I think I might be able to fix it. Pyra? Pyra being serious? They tried to kill Pyra one minute ago. That's a totally separate issue. Isn't that what you'd say, Rex? What? Oh, yeah. I guess it is. And that's why. Friend Pyra. Tora get it. Then Tora and Poppy also lend help. Looks like we're in too, Drumak. I would have it no other way. That's settled then. Stay out of our way, old man. Got it? You would all risk your lives for this. For the sake of Tantal, though we attempted to destroy the Aegis. It's not about Tantal. Then why? You're a king, right? You ought to be able to figure it out. Rex, you are... Morag? You leave me little choice. Zeke, where was the fetter again? How do we get there? I won't just tell you. I'll take you right to it. Zeke? Save it, old man. You better make a start on evacuating the people. Though with us on the case, your efforts are probably going to be wasted. Understood. No time for chit-chat. Let's go! Yeah!
Lady Morag, you're making that face again. If you keep frowning like that, you'll get wrinkles. I just don't get it. Tantau was founded by the counter Adamites. Then, after the war, they closed themselves off. But the way the king was acting, I can't help feeling there's something more to it. What, though? It was the Praetorium who sent us here on this mission. Why would he go to such lengths to reject it? It seemed almost like he wanted to cut ties with them. You think Indol is holding something else over Tantal? That would be an explanation, yes. Zeke, do you know anything useful? Nope. There's no records from back then. How about you? There's nothing in my journal from that period. I might have been returned to my core for some reason or other. Do you know anything about those days, Gramps? Hmm? No. I was somewhere else at the time. And matters of human kingdoms and so on didn't interest me much. Jeez, Gramps. What's the point of keeping an old timer like you around if you don't even know anything? Sometimes. It's funny how much you sound like Corinne. So you think the king wasn't telling us everything? There is a chance. Do you think it may be related to Jin and his comrades using Torna's name? If you saw the last state of humanity, you'd understand. Now that you have come this far, The last state. Hmm? Jin said something about the last state of humanity. I thought you meant like an evolution. You know, in the future. But maybe he meant the previous state of humanity. And that is the key to why they fight? Hmm. If... If that is the case... Perhaps I... Never should have been sealed away after all. What is this place? A battleground from the Aegis War. There are many things here, I remember. The walls and floors are melted. Must have been a hell of a battle. Ophion isn't the only artifice. You've already seen one other. Siren. The one Mithra commands. But during the war, there were countless artifices, wielded by Malos. So, it's a sight of a fight against him. Say, what are these artifices anyway? We've only actually met Ophion. We've never even seen Sidon, just that light thing it shoots down. They're a power granted to the Aegises. Divine swords sleeping in Elysium, far above us all. Hold on, I thought Elysium was a paradise, not a scary weapon stash. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? All that I can find in the corners of my memory is that townscape. I don't know why Father created me, or created the artifices. That's what I want to find out. Pirate. It's okay. We'll find out once we get there. I don't think... Open a chest, it might turn out great. But until then, it's just a crate. That's rule four of the Salvager's Code. Ha <laughs> ha! Rex. Comparing Elysium to dirty old sea junk?
My prince, look over there! Would you look at that? I guess we've arrived. Whoa, it looks way older than the palace. Yes, it seems untouched by the ravages of time. That's it. Looks like a core crystal. Is that the Omega Feta? Yes. That's Ophian's control core. It was originally a conduit that I used to communicate with Ophion. We have to hurry. Yes, you're right. Hmm. Well, can you fix it? Shut up. I'm sorry. <sighs> Mithra? Whoa. In that case... Are we... rising? All right, Prince. I've told Genbu to resume circling the Cloud Sea once he's done rising. Nice. Looks like we made it, after all. Oh, great news! Oh, Tora was not look forward to becoming flat as Argenta Monkfish. A job well done, eh? Hey, Rex, you can remove that thing now. Hmm. So it was hidden all the way out here. What? No wonder we couldn't find it. I'd just been wondering whether it was time to make an exit. Thanks for saving me the trouble. Lovely to see that tedious woman isn't here to get in our way this time. Care to join me? In a dance of death, Nia? I think I just threw up in my mouth a bit. Mean little girl. You've come for the feta, haven't you? Perceptive, kid. Condescending much? It's not like there's anything else here. You are so mean. Now, hand it over nicely would be the classic line, but no. I'm not letting you escape with your lives. For Jin's sake. Where are Jin and Malos anyway? There are a few things I need to ask them. Frankly, I don't think they've got much interest in what you have to say. Sure about that? Quite sure, yes. Not to interrupt the verbal spark, but how do you plan on doing anything without your blades? We're no pushovers, you know. Oh, we're quite aware of that. We just don't need them. You see? Explain yourself. Oh, 
crystals. They're blades. Worse. Flesh eaters. Bravo! Very good. We've had many an interruption in the past. But here, that seems less likely. So let's go all out. You can try, but I assure you, we won't go down easy. I wouldn't have it any other way. Like I said, all out. Inconceivable! How could we? These rats! Warned you, didn't we? You mess with Thunderbolt Zeke, that's what you get. You brought this on yourselves. <laughs> anyway, this has gone on long enough. Nighty night, chaps! Very much looking forward to interrogating you later. Here I go! Bring her on up! <laughs> Jim, where did he? Seems they don't call you Thunderbolt for nothing. That's the first time I've ever missed a vital point. <laughs> you bastard! Prince! Don't worry yourself. It's just a scratch, really. Jim, are you okay? Relax, he's not made of glass. Malos? Don't mind me. I'm just a spectator. He, on the other hand, insisted on coming here to settle a score. Jin did. Correct. You will give me both the Omega Fetter and the Aegis. You just try and take them. I know you're strong, but there's no way we're giving you Pyra or Mithra. You have power, boy. Words do little. If you know what you desire, you will have to show it. Not with words, but with your own strength. With wounds like that, they're done for. It's their biggest weakness. Your struggle is pointless. My power gives me control over all elementary particles. Party what? Huh. 
This allows me to accelerate my body to the speed of light. No matter how far ahead you can predict, your movements themselves are limited. You are no match for me. Mitra! I'm still here. Rex, we have to slow him down. Match light speed with light speed. Got it. Okay. Here we go. but a stream of particle energy. The particles that form it are too heavy to truly reach light speed. The result is obvious. Oh, no. Mithra's attack didn't... Jin. It's over, boy. Uh. Eat this! Of course. That's why you were at Banner's factory. You won't win so easily! <laughs> Lady Morag! Whoa. You're quite a looker from up close. Killing you will be such a waste. Let me go! You're a pig! S stop it! Ah! I'm surprised you're still breathing. Relax. You'll be able to rest after I've pried that core crystal from your chest. I won't die here. I have to reach Elysium. I have to find... The answers we're all looking for. <gasps> what answers? In this world, there are no answers. Ah! Uh, enough! I'm the one you want. Isn't that right? Leave them out of this. Oh, look. What a touching scene. Are you going to beg for their lives? No mockery, Mick. This is serious business. Put the sword away, Jin. If not, I'll... You'll do what, exactly? I will... ...annihilate myself. What? You need me alive, don't you, Melos? <laughs> you worked that much out, did you? Well done. But how would you make good on that threat? You don't have that kind of... Are you so sure about that? This is a shock. I didn't think you had it in you. What's going on? She's controlling Mithra's artifice herself. No. 
she's controlling Siren through sheer... willpower? Go ahead. I'll deflect it with my powers. Just like before. You could do that. If I use the particle cannon itself. But this is the targeting ray. It moves at the speed of light. And if I turn up the output just a little, that light alone has enough power to annihilate a single blade. You. One signal from me, and my body will be scoured from this world faster than you can blink. So? Jin? How unexpected. That you and Aegis would say something like that. So you'll do it. Open the gates to Elysium for us. Yes. If that is your wish. Don't! Hyra! They'll just... Uh! Jin? Very well. Hyra, Mia, keep Rex safe for me. No. No way! I don't agree to this! I'm really sorry, Rex. <sighs> uh, Hyra! But why? <sighs> Tyra! Look at the state of you. <sighs> you hadn't even noticed. Your own blade has been wounded so deeply, and all you can think of is yourself. Uh. You awakened the Aegis. I thought you might have been different, but you're just a fool, uh. a pitiful, childish fool. Uh. Huh? <laughs> 